Fury of the Film Fan here with my review for Terrifier 3. Freddy, Jason, Mike, Leatherface, and Psycho. Icons of horror. Names that have carried the mantle for so long, and for good reason. They changed the game. Each character building upon something familiar and introducing something new. What made these characters stand out was how they were able to carry the films that they were in following their own specific set of rules. Now there's a bunch more out there. Bunch of icons. Every decade, we're introduced to newcomers trying to take over these spots. Some respectable introductions included Ghostface, Jigsaw, even the monster from Jeepers Creepers. All solid and welcomed entries into the horror genre. But even the best of these run into a wall from time to time. And it's always when they deviate from what makes these icons so, well, iconic. Personally, I find the bar for horror is set very low. While I do enjoy the genre, it's also flooded with way too many poor films that throw up the idea of horror, but never fully get it. Horror, like comedy, never really gets the respect for being anything other than some chop mid-entertainment experience. A filler. Something to kill the time. No pun intended. But how does something that makes so much money continue to get such little respect? In 2023, 46 horror movies were released, grossing about $798 million. That's not counting all the indie films or the streaming titles or movies that never even saw the light of day. It could be that horror films is a tough sell, socially. Opening up to someone admitting that you like a specific slasher or something quote-unquote demonic invites a ton of judgment. So it's a quiet, guilty pleasure. For me, it's also the one genre I tend to ignore the word of mouth. Film is subjective, but horror is, like, really subjective. So when I see a commercial pushing something that was apparently so disgusting that audiences left the theater, eh, I don't buy it. I've seen that ad campaign so many times before, and I almost always leave disappointed. These reactions usually stem from people who got no business watching these films, or worse, planted influencer shills pushing the film. It takes a lot to move me. A lot. Terrifier 3 is the film this year that got this kind of treatment, this kind of push. It's also one of the first times ever that I can say, yeah, okay, I, I get it. A brief history. Terrifier first came onto the scene back in 2016, and going back to the commentary about OG horror icons and the rules they followed, Art the Clown was a figure that took those rules and threw them right out the window. What made the Terrifier so, well, terrifying, was just how unpredictable he was. There's more to why this character was an instant hit. David Howard Thornton does an incredible job of playing this demented force of evil, better than I have seen in years of horror. Thornton is able to convey so much with just facial expressions, switching from darkness to pure insanity in seconds. It never comes off aggressive or cringy. His persona is a masterful work of employing the old saying, less is more, and show me, don't tell me. In addition to his incredible performance as Art the Clown, this character is written so well. And, and uh, uh, let me explain. This is a clear example of how a character is written by someone who understands horror versus someone who thinks this is what horror fans want to see. Terrifier actively trolls the audience. So when there's a moment that's specifically designed to make you clench, you bet Art the Clown is right there laughing. Yeah, he's laughing at his victim, but he's also laughing at you, the audience. Saying in so many ways, yeah, I get it. I'm, I'm feeding off of those reactions. It's amazing, and it's so rare to find in horror. And that credit goes to writer and director Damien Leone, who just gets horror. He doesn't try to oversaturate the film with nonsensical dialogue or overcharacterization of characters we don't care about. The horror he presents is pure, old-school, practical effect wizardry that touches on the philosophy of horror. Philosophy of horror? What the fuck are you talking about, Fury? Yes, that's where this reviewer felt this movie shined. Damien Leon, he's an artist. A poet. 
Terrifier 3 has people asking, well, why do people enjoy this kind of stuff? What kind of person enjoys this stuff? Well, this is actually a good question. And the short answer is, well, it's pure adrenaline. It makes you feel something. And it's not asking you to feel something nice. No, it's, it's demanding you feel something. Anything. And in a world where nothing feels real, it's a welcome for many, myself included. For me, I see horror film and I imagine how I would handle this worst case scenario. What I would do, or most importantly, not do. Like, if I was ever stuck in a jigsaw trap, and I'm just going to let time run out. You know, I'm not going to deal with it. Things like that. Terrifier 3 left me really appreciating never having to run into something like that. Ever. Hopefully. Terrifier 3 is short on the story. If you haven't seen Terrifier 1 or 2, you really have no business seeing this one. The movie follows the events of Terrifier 2, with Sienna Shaw trying to get her life back together. Well, Art the Clown pursues her with the help of his victim from Terrifier 1, the disfigured Victoria Hayes, who is now possessed. What follows is a destructive and often random, bloody, disgusting, murderous rampage towards Sienna. As stated before, the acting from David Howard Thornton as Art the Clown is what carries this film, but the writing and directing gives Art the Clown everything he needs to be a fully fleshed out icon of horror. But a lot also has to be said about Lauren Lavara, who plays Sienna Shaw. Her reactions, her emotions, it, it's like a back and forth, a ping pong of, 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 of horror, and it just plays a key role in elevating this horror film. Surrounding actors usually act as fodder, but Lavara is like the Sidney Prescott or Laurie Strode of the series, perfectly bringing the raw emotion to the big screen. She is able to channel everything we the audience are saying and feeling from our seats without overselling it. It makes all other bad acting that you'll see in Terrifier 3 intentional. The acting difference between the two leads between Sienna and Art the Clown and then all the other supporting characters is like night and day with all supporting characters looking like throwbacks to cheesy horror flicks and that's intentional. Uh, the film just keeps you guessing what you're going to get and, and it's just pretty amazing. Now, unlike the film Cuckoo, there's not much lore or history to digest here. What you see is what you get and there's a lot that wisely goes unanswered. It's a good thing that we don't know everything. When series deviate from what works, well, that's when things start falling apart. And usually it starts when movies start over-explaining the mysteries and origins of what made these characters great. Terrifier 3 is pure horror. It's iconic horror. You don't know what's happening, you don't know why, and we're okay with that. It so accurately reflects the horror that we face in the real world, where everything is unpredictable, and we don't understand why things are the way they are. Hey, it's like the saying goes, art imitates life. Terrifier 3 is pure horror. It's iconic horror. It's the type of horror that's going to stay in your head way past the rolled credits. It's not a film you enjoy. It's something you experience. It absolutely delivers on what it's set out to do, and it does it very well. Terrifier 3 gets a Silver Fury Award. Now, this has been a Fury of the Film Fan Review, and I hope you enjoy the show.